among strings, one of the most important classes are the class of permutations. A permutation is simply a string in which repetition of characters is not allowed. So I give three examples of strings, and the first two are permutations, I hope, and the third one is not. Is it clear that the third one is not? You see the repetition? Now, you better check me because my record here is not very good. Do you see any repetition in the first two? I, I did not in, intend that there's any. Sometimes I tell small lies. I just told one. This one I did deliberately just to see if I could get you to slide one by. Usually my mistakes are unintentional. This one was deliberate. Okay, does everybody see that the correct statement for the second one should be a no? There are two capital letters. Now, uh, unless one says otherwise, you should say that lowercase and capital case are distinct, unless you're primitive and you're running Microsoft Windows, in, in which case you can't tell the difference. And actually, I, I have a split personality on this. If you come to my office, you will see several Windows 10 boxes, but you will also see a good faithful Linux uh, distribution there. I change my operating systems uh, more often than I change my clothes, I think. So I'm, I'm always, in, I can install an operating system faster than any human on the planet. Now, how to answer a question in this course. If you are asked how many permutations of 68 objects taken 23 at a time, then you should just answer it and say that's P6823. Now, what is this? Let's back up one slide. The number of permutations of M objects taken in at a time is defined by this product using the product rule, this basic principle of enumeration. If you're going to make up a permutation of length N from M objects, then how many choices do you have for the first symbol in your permutation? M. But once you've used that, then you can't use it again. So when you go to the second position in the string, the number of choices is m minus 1. And then m minus 2 choices, et cetera. And it falls down by 1 each time. And so you are simply multiplying the numbers together. But unlike the total word computation, this one is this falling product. So if you're asked something in general, it's perfectly OK in our course to say the answer is P6823. And that has meaning to all of us once we have used that notation and reserved it for counting permutations. Now, of course, if you really want to know the answer, then you have to do some arithmetic. And, and I did. So there's the actual value of P6823 displayed across the bottom of the screen. Now, do you think I did that by hand? No, I didn't. I used one of the software tools, and just I used Maple. I encourage you to experiment with Maple and Mathematica and at least learn how to get those tools to do calculations like this for you. So on a test, I'll never ask you what is P6823? Tell me explicitly. I might ask you to tell me what P103 is, just to make sure that you know. That wouldn't be so bad by hand. But in general, when you're answering questions, you can use the notation that we will have. And there will be more like this as the course goes on where you, you don't have to do the actual arithmetic. OK. Now, there's a dual problem. The permutations, the notion of combinations. And they're connected via this little example. If you have 250 students, and they 
have class elections to elect a slate of officers, a president, a vice president, and a treasurer. That's three different offices. How many different outcomes are possible? And the second problem is related. You want to have a leadership team, like a committee. You're going to elect three persons, and they're going to be your leadership team. But there's no distinction between them. There's no notion of one being the first leader, the supreme leader, and one the second leader. They're just there together. They're all in a group. So we want to count these two things. Well, the first one we've already done. The number of ways that you can have a slate of three officers is just a permutation of 250 objects, people, students, taken three at a time. So the answer is 250 times 249 times 248. In fact, I don't really need to write that out. And by the way, uh, let me point out the obvious thing here. I'm using star as a multiplication. Whenever uh, I, I really need to, if I write mn sequentially, you know that I mean the product m times n. But if I write 5, 6, you don't know whether I mean 56 or you don't know. So I, when there's ambiguity in it, I'm putting in a, a star for multiplication. Okay, so I didn't really need to write out the 250 times 249 times 248. You knew that once I wrote the P253. Is that clear? All right. But now, how do you do the second problem? A group of 250 students is just going to elect a leadership committee. How many different outcomes are possible? And we're going to call this a combination. We have permutations, and the second concept is called a combination. We're going to have a combination of 250 objects taken three at a time. And the answer is take the numerator to be the permutation problem and then divide it by a factorial. The factorial is the one, two, three, up to however many objects you're actually taking. Now, what's the explanation for that? I do the first problem, and I get the slate of officers. So that's a permutation problem. One of them has been designated the president. One is the vice president and one is the treasurer. Now I strip off their labels. How many ways can that be done? Well, there are three choices for the one who's going to be the president. There are two choices for the one who's going to be the vice president. Once those are done, there's only one left, and that one is the treasurer. So there's three times two times one ways to distinguish among the six patterns, so I divide by 6, and then I get the ratio of the permutations divided by that falling factorial, and that's the number of combinations of 250 objects taken three at a time. Permutations, order matters. Combinations, order does not matter.